Hey guys, ViscoseColm24 here, bringing you a real quick redstone video. Today I'm going to be showing you all this. It is my super compact and the current smallest 5x5 funnel door in Bedrock Edition. I'm going to click this lever, you can see it'll all close. It's relatively fast for its size, but the animation isn't the best. As you saw, it was all very wacky, and when I go over to the back side, you can see it's not double-sided. This is because it's a funnel door. I've explained this in other videos, but for those who don't know, there's a small difference between vault and funnel. This design right here is often confused on YouTube as just a vault. Many people call it a vault because that's easier for views, I guess. But again, the difference is very simple. A vault door is this design, but double-sided, whereas a funnel door is the exact same design, but single-sided. And so that's why there's no backside. This does give you a chance to see the weird layout that I used, though, with this extra piston and redstone block, which I'll be explaining later on. When I go back on over to the front and flick the lever again, you can see it also all opens. The animation is horrible on the opening, which is why I'm not going to be giving a tutorial on this. This thing is 9 blocks wide, 11 blocks tall, and 3 blocks deep. So it has a volume of 297 blocks. This is one block shallower than my previous design, which I made a tutorial on. As you can see right here, it has a much better animation, which is why I chose it for the tutorial. And same thing on the opening. It's also, while it's not... Uh, the fastest. I think they have very similar speeds and regardless this thing is fine for survival applications. I was trying to make it cheap even though these sides were not the cheapest. So that's why I chose to make a tutorial on this. I did actually have a design of the exact same size here and I had been planning on making a video for it but during the recording of that video the design showed unreliability. I'll show a short clip of it on the screen now which is the only one that I still have because I destroyed it. I removed it from this world. It was as ugly looking as this, <laughs> and the animation was terrible, but the side showed unreliability, so I decided to scrap it. I'm not going to be giving a tutorial on this because it's not very good for a door, especially in like world your worlds. It doesn't look good on the opening or closing, and the hallway is an absolute mess. So if you want a 5x5 funnel door that's quite small, this is what I'd recommend, and I guess I can link the tutorial in the description. Also, another reason that I'm going to link the tutorial is because I had an explanation section, and these doors use the exact same sides, or the layout for the sides. They use the exact same side layout. Regardless, I'm not going to be explaining them in this video, but I did explain them in the video that I made on this door right here. So if you're wondering about the sides, again, link will be in the description. So without further ado, I guess we can get into the explanation portion of the top, because that's really the only part of this door that's interesting. So now on to the layout here. So as you can see, it looks very weird, especially when compared to the layout I used on my tutorial 5x5 funnel here. This one looks pretty standard, whereas this one looks like an absolute mess. But there are a few key features in this that you might actually recognize from a lot of my other doors. First of all, this right here is a redstone block pusher. So as you can see when I activate that, and that pushes a redstone block. And I've used this in a lot of doors. Pretty much every single door that I've made above 6x6 and a lot of my 5x5s sometimes use this. My super compact 5x5s use this kind of thing. But yeah, I use this a lot. And this right here is a technique that I've been using to compact down the quads in my 7x7s. You might recognize this technique from my 7x7 funnel door. And I'm also going to be posting a video on a super small 7x7 cave door, which uses a similar technique. What I've done is I've taken a slime extender here and then add an, another piston onto the back so that it can extend an extra block. Normally for a 5x5, you need a triple piston extender for the middle block. As you can see, one, two, three blocks to get that middle block in. So I took a double piston extender here and then slapped on another piston so it could be a triple. The reason that I did this is because I wanted the layout to be contained. As you can see here, in order to contain this layout, I had to add on a back layer here for obsidian. Whereas on this one, it's only three blocks deep. No back layer at all. And I just like doing this because I feel a contained door is a lot easier to put into other settings, even if this one has a horrible animation. So, first step is we activate all three of these pistons at once. The setup here is different. As you can see, inside this door, there is an actual full slider here, as well as a cauldron in the way. And the reason that I set it up like this is just for demonstration purposes. So this activates, activating all those pistons. It pushes the redstone block pusher into place and also slides this down a block. Then this extends and the redstone block pusher has already extended. And so there it is. 
It is now pushed down the top section of our door. You can see one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm just filling the rest of the door here. There it is. You can see where it all fits in. There we go. And so for the retraction, I had this mess of observers here and a bell, which you might have heard earlier. There's a reason for this that I don't know if I've covered on my channel before, but normally what I would use for something like this, an observer detecting a block being powered by a redstone block, is a hopper, a dropper, or a dispenser. As you can see here, when these get powered or depowered, they update observers and the observers give a pulse. But bells are a little bit different. Bells will give observers a pulse when they're powered, but not when they're depowered. And so this sort of allows you to separate circuits, having them only activate on one edge. I think this, what the devs were going for here was making it so that the observer was only detecting the bell ringing. As you can see here, bell rings and moves, so the observer detects that, but nothing happens on the falling edge. I think that this works out pretty well, and obviously I would never trade it for the Java Edition double pulse because this right here is absurdly useful and it has allowed me to create this door because if I were to replace with this with a hopper, dropper, or a dispenser there's a chance that it would break on the closing as this thing might get powered when it's in that position but what this accomplishes is so you can see here it pushes down but there's nothing to reactivate it on the way back up so if I were to deactivate this and that obviously is the first thing that deactivates then that this sticky piston is left behind its block. So if I were to just refire this, you can see that it would leave behind the block and it wouldn't get retracted into the ceiling. The observers make it so that it gets refired at every point that it needs to to pull the block back into the ceiling. And so, if I just really quickly re-extend this, retract to there, and then we have an observer in this position, pulse it, then pull it up, and then a four tick repeater, you're over there, yeah. It just makes it so that this sticky piston doesn't leave its block behind in the middle of the doorway. And these things are handled separately. So I think that's all that I wanted to cover for this door. I hope it was comprehensible, and I know that this was a really, really quick showcase video and a little small t explanation part. i am got bigger things coming soon. I have a really big door, actually, that I'm going to be making a cinematic showcase on. I found music, I just have to get the shots and start editing it all together and also get words on the screen using a few text and image editors and all that stuff. So I'm putting together a cinematic showcase of sorts and a explanation video on that 7x7 cave door I mentioned. But yeah, that's just about it for this video. I'm ViscoseComb24 and I'll see you next time.